Police call it contact with the dog. The rest of us call it biting. And it's happening more often. If the police service has a tool like a dog, we're responsible for the use of that tool. And we'll certainly be accountable for the use of that tool. Here's how often police dogs bit people during arrests in Saskatoon. Last year, it happened 33 times. Each year, Saskatoon police issue a report on the total number of suspects injured after any contact with police. Last year, 110 people were injured. That's two people being hurt every week. It's a potentially lethal use of force. This lawyer says police need to catch bad guys. But cities also need to question whether officers are letting dogs do the dirty work. They're proceeding on assumptions that the person that they're, 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 um, they're tracking is uh, A, guilty, and B, deserves to be have the use of, uh, of uh, a dog penetrating their flesh. Um. This week alone in Regina, three teenage boys were bitten by police dogs. One had to be hospitalized. Police call the injuries for the other two minor. But looking back over the past few years of police contact with dogs in Regina, in most cases, people got hurt. If the person is hiding or sitting on the steps, uh, not running away, that should not be a reason uh, to use any force uh, uh, penetrating the, the person's body. Now, one thing we're missing is the number of times police dogs bite bystanders or people who are never convicted of crimes. Now, police here in Saskatoon say that's rare, but as we saw with the six-year-old girl this week, it happens. Now, Andrew Mason says until police start training their dogs to avoid biting children entirely, he says that could be grounds for a lawsuit against police officers or the cities overseeing them. Jennifer Cannell, CBC News, Saskatoon.